Welcome to the Fostering Change Podcast, Season 3. I'm Rob Shear, the founder of Comfort Cases and your host. Together, we have made such a difference in the world. We've met with leaders and change makers in the foster care system. We've met with charities and philanthropists, celebrities, authors, and so much more. We'll continue to bring you guests who will share how together, as a community, we can bring about change. Welcome once again to Fostering Change. Well, you know, here we are, another episode of Fostering Change. And by the way, you know what it is. It's my favorite time of year. That's right. You know, most people's favorite time of year is when we throw up that Christmas tree or, you know, maybe the turkey dinner that's on the table, which I love all of those holidays as well. But I absolutely love May. And I love May for lots of reasons. But the most important thing, that it is National Foster Care Awareness Month. That's exactly right. You know, I say to my husband and my kids all the time that every single day and every single month, we should be awareness of children who are in our foster care system. But you know what? They're giving us May. But guess what? I got some great news. So, you know, throughout the last 10 years, and that's right, guys, it's hard to believe. 10 years ago this year, we packed our very first case. And I remember as the time was going by, year one, year two, year three, we were this little mom and pop chair as we worked in my conference room, as you all know, I'm a banker by trade, and we would set up in my conference room and we would pack cases and I would do these little videos and I would talk about, you know, um, how we would be loved to have a corporate sponsor and how important it is for corporations to truly know what is their corporate responsibility. And then it happened. It happened. The phone rang. I was at my desk. I'll never forget it. And there was a woman who said that she wanted to do a story about my daughter, my daughter, Amaya. And she wanted to talk to Amaya about this charity that she'd heard about called Comfort Cases. And she said that she was actually with Mattel. That's exactly right, with Mattel. Ladies, welcome to Fostering Change. So Brittany, Nancy, you're the executive director for the Mattel Children's Foundation, correct? And Brittany, you are the senior specialist for the Mattel Children's Foundation. So welcome to Fostering Change. And I, I am just, you have no idea how full circle this is, okay? And I'm gonna give you an opportunity to talk, not to worry, but I've got to tell our listeners and our viewers because they know, they see it right here. This is it, this is it, my friends. This is what actually got us to where we are today. So you have to realize that seven years ago, okay? Seven years ago, almost to the day of our anniversary, this amazing magazine american girl that was published by mattel came out and in it there's my beautiful daughter my beautiful daughter at the time who was of 10 years old okay it talked about our family it talked about this organization that my daughter had helped us start and about how we were packing kids packing cases for kids who were coming into foster care you know i will have to tell you that when mattel did this story my daughter actually said to you all I don't own an American Girl doll. And she's like, so I don't think you want to interview me. And you know what Mattel said? Mattel said, we do want to interview you because you have a story. And so they called us, they told us that it was coming out. This article came out and the whole world read it. By the way, why did they read it? Because Mattel did exactly what they always do. They stand next to their product, okay? We had the worst backlash that you can possibly imagine. So what people didn't know is that they showed this picture right here, this picture of my beautiful family. You know, never once in the article did they mention the fact that Amaya has two dads. Never once did they mention the fact that, yes, my children are of color. But what they did was they showed a family, a family that truly loved. Well, we did not expect to have the backlash that we did. And all of a sudden, this one story became a viral story a story to talk about two white men who were raising four black children. And all of a sudden there was a boycott for Mattel. I don't even know if you ladies know this, but there was a group called A Million Moms. And by the way, you million moms, I want to love all over you because if it wasn't for you and if it wasn't for Mattel, we would not have helped 165,000 children by giving them cases. 
So thank you guys so, so much. You know, it's been a, it's been a whirlwind, but now we have some good announcement. And what are we going to announce? That we were able to give you all some new items for your cases. We're so excited about that. And we're excited to be able to continue to bring these comfort cases to children everywhere. So, um, and to, to include Mattel product in that is really special for us. Well, I will have to tell you. So when you guys decided, you know, to partner up with us, I was so excited. My, I will tell you, you should have heard the screaming in my house from all of my kids because, you know, Mattel has been such a, such an important role when it comes to not only our kids growing up, you know, by the way, every one of us probably have a Mattel toy somewhere within their home, but you know, there were other things that you really don't know when it comes to kids who are in foster care. One of the things is, is that kids who come into foster care, they have a really hard time with connection. Okay. Um, they've been moved from home to home, but what really connected our family was Uno, you know, and by the way, um, Mattel, thank you so much, but my son is the Uno champion um, and we play it often, but what I don't think you guys know is that when my kids go to therapy, and by the way, you know, everybody talk, I talk about this quite often. Therapy is amazing, but how they've been able to open my children up is by sitting there starting without playing Uno with them. So thank you for all the Uno cards that you gave us. We've been giving them out and handing them out. So tell me a little bit about Mattel's foundation. Sure. Well, I'll, I'll kick that off. And again, thank you so much for having us. We're thrilled to be here and to partner with you, um, specifically highlighting May as Foster Care Awareness Month. Um, we, you know, have a true mission to help children and families across the world by utilizing our resources. Our resources are our people and our product. Um, and, you know, you speak of UNO and we hear similar stories all the time about how our giving um, with UNO really brings together children and families. And so we're really thrilled to have as a pillar giving point for the Mattel Children's Foundation is our product. Um, it brings together kids and families, and we're thrilled to be able to give out hundreds of thousands of toys a year. Um, and then our people, our people are amazing. You spoke of those that you worked with um, at American Girl, and it, it's a, truly a company that's built on purpose and giving. Um, and everyone at the company, there's two of us that, that you know, run the foundation, but it takes the entire world of Mattel to actually make all of these amazing possibilities for kids in need happen. And, you know, I say that quite often is that um, your community is not your zip code. Your community is our human race. And as someone who has a nonprofit where 96% is volunteer ran, we know how important it is to have a good team behind you to make sure that, you know, um, we are getting everything and all of our mission out. You know, I have to tell you all something that you didn't realize this, but the first set of UNO cards that you sent out, um, I was actually able to be a part of a packing party that we had and they went into the cases and I actually was able to see a couple of the kids who opened up their cases when they pulled out and the, the excitement in their face you know um, and and that's not all that you guys gave us by the way I just want people to know that I mean it's just not uno cards I mean there's been stuffies there's been so many things that that you have given us but I'd like to talk about what the play it forward is you guys have the play it forward can you tell me a little bit about that yeah, sure. Um, so in 2018, we uh, launched a global movement um, to bring a day of play across all of Mattel offices where employees and kids and the community would come together. And then this after the first couple of years, um, and then we went through the pandemic, we adopted a an umbrella moment within Mattel to broaden that day of play into a week of play. And the umbrella is that we're always playing it forward. So annually, we did this last year and we kicked it off in June. We did it virtually and we're very happy to be able to come together in person in most regions across the world this year, where we'll be supporting um, with a five day um plan where we're playing it forward with community organizations through building play kits, 
building playhouses and get just really giving back to the community in need. Um, Brittany, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I mean, Nancy mentioned that it's global. So we get to partner with all of our offices around the world and to look at those communities where our employees live, work, and play and be able to give back to those organizations that mean something to those employees. So um, we've got people in Latin America, we've got people in Asia and Europe, so all over the world, we all come together during this week and it's us really hitting the pavement and um, painting murals and um, building houses and doing everything that we can to help empower the community. So it's a really important moment for us, but it also expands all year. Everything we do, all of our giving, all of our give back, we call it playing it forward. So it's kind of become part of who we are and part of our life. So it's, it's really important and it's very special to us. You know, I absolutely love that. And I love the fact that, you know, you're understanding that how important it is for us to support our communities. You know, I do believe that there is a corporate responsibility for each and every person who either works or runs a corporation. And the corporate responsibility is to support the community that with you are in. And it's one of the things we do here at Comfort Cases. We are the only organization that actually has no age restrictions um, because we believe and we know for a fact that empathy is something that none of us are born with. It's not, you know, empathy is something that we teach. And how do you teach that? By helping others. So having the fact that you got your employees that are out there and they're playing, whether it's building a playground, whether it's, you know, you know, I, I let me tell you, I, there, an idea just to throw out there, everybody, there are a lot of group homes. We have so many group homes across the country. You know what, you know, reach out to me. I'll send you a pack of Uno cards for you to go to the group home and sit down and play that week with these kids. It will change your life. Listen, everybody, I told you this was a big announcement for the month of May. This kicked off our National Foster Care Awareness Month. You know, understanding, just think about it. Just think about it, 700. I tell you this number all the time. Well, I'm here to tell you the number has increased. The number has increased. We were averaging one child every two minutes coming into the foster care system in the United States. You know what? That number is now almost doubled, almost doubled. We are at 1,200 children a day, a day, okay, that are coming into foster care. We need to bring awareness to this, and we need to bring awareness to them, but we also need to make sure we let them know they are special. And when we come right back, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what Mattel's doing and what their philosophy is. Because I have to tell you, I am pretty excited about empowering our youth. Because as I say this all the time, look into a child's eyes. Really look into a child's eyes. Ladies, I will tell you, you see your future, my future, our future. We'll be right back. So, you know, everybody, I talk about this quite often, um, seeing the expansion that we have at Comfort Cases and to now know that we have a Comfort Cases UK team, I could not be more grateful. But what I'm so excited about is that on May the 24th, my family will be boarding a plane and heading to the UK for a really big event. So I have my friend, Sarah, who is actually also the CEO and the founder of Comfort Cases UK right here with me today. So so Sarah, tell us about what's going on when I get there. Oh my gosh, we are so excited to have you come to the UK. I cannot tell you, we are just so looking forward to meeting you and all your family. And we have got a huge event taking place on the 26th of May. Um, we are introducing comfort cases to our community, to our network, and we are so excited to invite you to talk as our keynote speaker. Um, and we will be doing some fundraising on the evening, but most importantly is to spread the message of how important the work that Comfort Cases UK is trying to do and to continue all the good work that you've already been doing over there in the US. And uh, things are happening really fast here and we just cannot wait for you to share it with us. Well, I will tell you, I'm really, really excited. So listen, everybody, for those who are listening to our podcast or actually you're watching it on YouTube, I want you all to do me one big favor. I want you to go to comfortcasesuk.org and donate. 
That's exactly right. What you would have donated to Comfort Cases, you know, here, I want you to go donate to ComfortCasesUK.org. We truly need to make people understand whether there's a pond that is separating us, we are all one community. So Sarah, I'm excited to come to the UK, sending lots of love and please, ComfortCasesUK.org. Well, you know, I love a good conversation, but there is nothing better than a good conversation when you have a new corporate sponsor. And that's exactly right. You know, I have said this so many times. Um, if I needed a big check, I could walk into a corporation and I guarantee you we could get a big check. That's not what I wanted. You know, what I wanted is I wanted corporations to stand next to me. I wanted them to stand next to the thousands and thousands of children who are in our foster care system, okay? And really listen to what their story is. And that's what Mattel has done. And I'm so excited, as I said, to have them here today. You know, your mission empowering the next generation to explore the wonders of childhood and reach their full potential. Explain that to me a little bit, because I believe, and for us, Every single child can do that by helping each other. So how do you, what does that mean for you with Mattel? Yeah, so specifically, great question. And, and we love, you know, this mission and vision for Mattel and specifically within the foundation um, for us outside of all of our uh, amazing commercial and content offerings, the foundation really digs into the company's mission through accessing our resources, as I mentioned before. And so not only through our people and our product, but actually zeroing into specific moments that we know are important to the development of kids, and that's through health, well-being, education, um, uh, making sure that their communities are taken care of. And so we do that in a variety of different ways, as we talked about. But for us in the foundation, I think it's really the basic mission of making sure that kids, especially in foster care, know that we have their back, that we're behind them, and we're utilizing our resources, especially for these groups of kids, to make sure that their tomorrow, our next generation of leaders, know that they have the support of the of the foundation and, and companies like Mattel um, to make sure that they reach that potential. So Brittany, I have a question for you. The first time that you realized that children in foster care are actually given trash bags to carry their belongings, how did that, you know, you're getting ready to be a new mom and, you know, how did that make you feel? Oh my goodness. I mean, something Nancy and I were talking about earlier today is the fact that that someone would have to go through that and that they almost feel reduced to what that means. And so um, the, the idea that you all are now providing them with a suitcase and with these items in it that they can have a sense of belonging um, is really, really spectacular. And I can't imagine having my child go through something like that it, it breaks my heart. I think the first time we spoke, Rob, I started crying on the, on the call. I was like, I can't even handle this. It's so much. Um, so I just, I'm so thrilled that you all are, are helping out these kids that can, you know, think of what's next and, and be empowered and have a future to look forward to, um, that they're not reduced to being a trash bag or what, what is in that trash bag. So I, I agree. I agree. And let me tell you something, you know, 10 years ago when we started Comfort Cases, um, there was only one other organization in the entire United States that was doing what we're doing. And, you know, I am so, so excited when I see all of these other organizations that are now popping up and they're doing bags, bags of love, bags of hope, bags. Of, and, you know, people, I say it all the time. Um, you know, if you truly are a true nonprofit, and by the way, I'm a business guy at the end of the day, but if you're a truly nonprofit, that you want to lift those other organizations up. But I always remind them, let's not, re let's just not, you know, repeat doing the same wheel over. Let's come together, you know, and work together because understanding that, you know, it's this year alone in 2022, we estimated 237,000 children entering the foster care system. Now, Comfort Cases last year handed out a little over 25,000 cases, so we can't hit every kid. So we need other organizations to do this. But, you know, one of the things that, you know, Nancy, you were talking about earlier that I didn't know about, and I would like for our listeners and viewers is for you to talk about a project that you guys started in 2018 
Because right there, what you were telling me, that is dignity. You know, people don't understand that, you know, giving a child dignity is giving them hope. Um, can you tell us about this particular project? Yeah, in, um, and thank you for sharing that because in 2018, we built this program learning about the idea that a child would be traveling from the system into a new home and, and being given a trash bag to put their belongings in simply was unacceptable to us here at Mattel and the Children's Foundation. And so we developed a way to be able to deliver our in-kind toy donations that we would normally make and send to these organizations. But we wanted to create a space where our employees could get involved and build a special kit um, with a note of encouragement that we could add right into them and send to the organizations rather than just boxes of our toys. We packed play kits um, and we built these kits in cinch sack bags that could act like a, you know, a backpack or something that it, in bright colors with you know, the words play on the bag. So it'd be something like, and in, inside delivered all different types of toys, the Uno, Hot Wheels, Barbie, Fish your price items so that they have like kind of their roaming toy kit with them that they could have in addition to these wonderful comfort cases that you provide. And so dignity is spot on. There's no way, um, again, that we feel it's acceptable for kids to have to enter into the system and with a trash bag. It, it's just something that we wanted to make sure we could try and make a difference in. Well, you know, I tell my kids all the time, um, my my goal is that there will be a day that I will be able to walk on the steps of the Capitol and our nation's capital and drop a trash bag and say, this is no longer going to be allowed because we as a community have come together and we as a community have decided that children deserve better. And understanding that kids enter foster care because of a choice that someone else made. They, they enter foster care because of a choice someone else made we can make a better choice and we can do better. And let me tell you something, that's exactly what Mattel does. You know, I say this to people all the time. You really, really want to do something. You understand, as I've repeated, this world spins around because doers are pushing it. Doers are pushing it. Well, let me tell you, Mattel, they're doers. They're doers. So as you're thinking about going out and you're purchasing something next time, please think about Mattel, okay? Because they are walking the walk and they're talking the talk. And they're not just the corporation that's out there that's only wanting to write the big check. And again, I don't mind those big checks. And thank you because I buy more backpacks with them. But I also love people that stand next to me and they have the passion. And that's what Mattel does. You know, I'm going to end today and let you guys know. Let's talk, say a little bit more about my beautiful daughter, Amaya. So just to let you know, my daughter, Amaya, when she was chosen to be in the American Girl magazine, that's all we thought would happen. She was in the magazine. It catapulted comfort cases. We are forever humbled and grateful. But little would I know that Mattel would reach out to reach out to us several years later and choose my daughter Amaya to be the American girl of the century. And so Mattel once again um, stepped up with a very generous donation to comfort cases and lots of product but also my daughter got the doll the amaya doll which we are very proud of but i will tell you we are a mattel family comfort cases is a mattel family and you all are now part of comfort cases so i want to say thank you thank you for bringing awareness to this i know that you all will do more than just for the month of may i know i want to have you back on our podcast and let people know how we've grown this partnership because the only way that we're going to change our foster care system i'm telling you this nancy and Brittany, from experience is by doing what you and i have done today talking about it, shedding the light on it, and then also having the corporate responsibility to step up and say, what can we do? Because everything that you do makes a difference for tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, again, I cannot thank you enough for tuning in to another episode of Fostering Change. You know, we are on that total catapult to be the number one podcast again for foster care and adoption. And it's because of guests, that we have today where they are educating you. They are letting you know exactly what they're doing, what you can be doing. And what I ask you all to do now, it's May, okay? Go out, buy some Uno cards, buy some Matchbox cards, 
buy something that has Mattel's logo on it because you know that when you do that, it's helping com organizations like Comfort Cases and other organizations, not only in our country, but in the world, you know? And again, as I said, your zip code is not your community, my friends, it's our human race. Go out and be a good human. Take care. I wanna say thank you to each and every one of you for listening or watching the latest episode of Fostering Change. All of us on our team hope that you've learned something new today and have been inspired to be a good human. Now, just a reminder that you can always find Fostering Change on your favorite channels on Google, Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, and others including, of course, comfortcases.org. I want to give a big thank you to all of you for joining us each and every week. And a reminder that if you have a suggestion for a guest, or maybe you might have a question about today's podcast, or are interested in becoming a sponsor of Fostering Change, please don't hesitate to email me personally at fosteringchange at comfortcases.org. Now, that's it for now. Thanks again, and we'll see you next Tuesday. Take care.